Hello everybody, my name is Tukreva and welcome back to some more Victoria 2 playing as Italy. Germany is big again and they are my ally. They like us a lot. The fascists are in charge. I mean, France is the only actual fascist dictatorship. But we have fascists in uh, Germany in charge and nationalists. It's actually reactionary in Japan. And that's also reactionary. Okay. And we also have them in Austria-Hungary, as far as I know. So, there's that. Fourth military power, because we have expanded our fleet with a couple of dreadnoughts again. Fascist newspaper. Um, I believe it is mostly read by the middle class, actually. I have no idea. Just just trying something. Um, secularization is sure thing. Yeah, secularization first. Let's go to the next province. I'm just helping Austria-Hungary unseach so it can actually be a little bit of a power again. And the more they can contribute to their own economy, the more I can contribute to theirs, and it just keeps working that way. Um, poor Strata, I'm decreasing the taxes again, because the more they can spend on stuff in factories, the better it is for us in the long run as well. We are still making a thousand a day, wow. Mostly because we're not getting all of our airplanes or tanks right now. How is our subsidies are getting better? On the occupation of Jelovar. Um, heat debate for protection. No, no, no. Free trade. It's getting better, but it's still not great. Um, scientists in our country have discovered a tank cat. Experience in the Great War showed the value and usefulness of tanks. However, those that saw action tended to be a bit unwieldy in rough terrain and not very mobile. Tankettes were the first in a long line of developments in tank technology that allowed for greater speeds and better maneuverability. Secularization first, again. They're all about the secularization sensation right now. There you go, so I grab six days to unseed that for them. That's what my army is doing, basically. Just moving along. Helping them. Okay, I'm not gonna help them out here, because that's going well. Uh, Bihar is done. Next, please. Uh, elections are finished. Oh, socialists actually lose some power. <gasps> it is done! The socialists are finally in power! Seriously, I'm trying to pause the game. Thank you. Siege of Mostar is over. Good. Oh, I probably just right when the siege finished, I tried to pause it, so it unpaused it. Anyway, wow. The socialists, 37%. Socialists and communists. What? This is amazing. We finally have not got the same party. Now let's actually compare the two of them. Protectionism, protectionism, interventionism. Planned economy. Okay. That's different. It means I can build my own factories now. Wow. Um, do capitalists actually get to do anything now? I'm not sure. But anti-military, so that's okay. Full citizenship. All cultures can vote. Oh, not bad. Um... Let's see, that actually... Yay! Oh, wow, Min we have a minimum tax base. Well, in that case, I'm just going to drop everything to the minimum tax base. So, what happens with our factories now? I actually have no idea. These are down, at least. Clipper shipyard in Piedmont. You know what? It's a clipper shipyard. I have no idea why it's still even around. So, I'm just going to close the fuck down on it oh we are actually making telephones again i think um production production no we are actually not building telephones that's weird oh well hmm oh capitalists are losing money now though because of the planned economy stuff Ooh. Nope, there's some money again. Let's 
going a bit up and down right now, which is weird. Oh well. And them old cotton fields, yes, send some to our neighbors. Should be fine. We're almost done unseeding the entirety here. And we can send this army home for change. There we go. Socialists are in power. That took them a long time. 42.9 of the upper house votes in favor here. And only 32 there. Oh well. The last couple of them are excellent. Sure thing, give us 50 free fish. And there we go, one more. Well, we'll help out here as well, but... Five days to unseage that one. This seems to be five days as well now. Yep. You have just one... <sighs> Seriously. <laughs> the second we unseage, the second to the last one, rebels have risen. Okay, I'm just going to send them home now to um, Innsbruck into Venice. Should be fine. Just running through all their, all most of their rebels at least. Helps them out again. There we go. Actually, the socialists are not that great to have in power. But, oh well. That's the planned economy stuff. Minimum tax is high. So interventionism, what does that do? Expand, close, build railway, yes. Build factories, expand factories, everything with railways. Invest in projects, invest in projects. Um, of course not, tensions and run. I guess. Great War Experience is almost finished, by the way. That's a good thing. Um, the United Kingdom didn't really like us before. so Now they have the Liberals in charge again. Now that we finally have someone other than... Seriously. Italian Communists. And they are being beat up left, right, and center. Are there any in Africa? Probably. Yes, there are. Um, hunting rebels, black shirts, all pubs and publia become more fascist. I don't want them to gain militancy, so. Oh, no rebels down there, which is fine. They are so fast now. Oh, um, Spain, sure, I back my ally all the time. Research done. Crisis against France. Italy, no one. France, ooh. That's not good. Um, how can I get them placed in the sun? Nah, that's fine. Um, morale up. You know what? Finish up everything on army tech. Battle of Halaib. They are freaking fast, though. Seven kilometers per hour. Not bad, but there's a railroad everywhere, so... They're abusing the railroad to get it around the country then. How high is their morale nowadays? 125 organization. And the right one is experience is 30% on some of these. Yeah, just rush through all the communists now. Rebels in Greece and the Ottoman Empire. Oh, just a few on Crete, actually. Well, the Ottoman Empire is dealing with them, so... You know, wow, it's an infamy has dropped for a long time now. We haven't been going to war. And they have military access to us. Ooh, Russia decided to back them. Um, hang on, armored cars. What does they do now? Still more inclined to aid Italy. And yeah, Germany is completely inclined to aid us. So there's that. Armored cars fill the role not well suited to tanks or to regular infantry mounted on trucks. Providing lighter vehicles to cavalry and police units. Armored cars could travel at speed over regular roads and provide a high degree of firepower per vehicle. 
Maximum speed plus one for cavalry. How fast are they then? 10 per hour on regular cavalry. Oh, SARS actually. Regular cavalry has nine. Infantry is at seven. Artillery is at seven. Tanks are at eight. Aircraft are at eight. Huh. It's in itself a little bit funny. Um, yeah, socialist loyalty is just going very well. <laughs> I think what I need to do though is get our athletes are victorious. Toscana, Romagna, Lombardia. Toscana, Lombardia, Romagna. So I'm just gonna drop, remove, remove. I'm just gonna drop from all of them and go for the next six. Should be fine. T T T T. That's them. Toscana, socialist. Provence, socialist. Ron, socialist. Lombardia, socialist. Emilia, socialist. Istria, socialist. I know, I know, that I said that socialist isn't the best for our country to be ruling because of the planned economy. Actually, not that great. And that means that we have to do everything about um, the factories ourselves. Actually, now there is a thing. Capitalists cannot do anything about it anymore. We have to do it. Hmm. Disloyal regiments, lazy natives. You know, thirty point eight percent. I yeah. So that's the difference between planned economy and interventionism, really. Hmm. Oh well. You should increase in size your full. You should too. Um, ooh. You're doing well. Let's increase a couple of factories at least. Most of them are already filled up anyway, so. And There's room in some of those factories as well, you know, so. I sometimes it's ah the tank factory is still expanding. Radios I want more radios, I want more telephones actually. Um and Campania can have the car factory as well. It's making a lot of money again. Austria Hungary, decrease the opinion of Germany, please. There we go. France is offering us a white piece and I will accept that. So, are the Dutch in anyone's sphere yet? No one is even trying? No! Wait, wait. We cannot influence them while we have a uh, truce. Okay. Do we have a truce with Belgium? No, we don't. So we should try for Belgium. Switzerland is at max anyway. Um, You know what? Let's at least max out Spain. And reduce the... um. French influence there. Belgium, Austria, Hungary. Yeah, Germany is trying again. Karl Menger has been hailed as one of the three leaders of the marginalist revolution. I'm gonna read it, just pause it, I guess. We're losing money quite quickly again. Capitalists are doing fine. Wow, 20. What the? L. Oh, constructions. Okay. Fair enough. That's why this is so high. Big Connor goes bankrupt. It has been a while since a nation went bankrupt. Hyperinflation. Let's put everyone at 60% tax rate. There we go. For many nations... The socio-economic strains caused by involvement in wars with other industrial nations resulted in huge deficits that made it impossible to return immediately to the gold standard. Some nations facing new demands upon their incomes as a result of new social obligations to those involved in recent wars or obligations for being on the losing side. Okay, saving. On the losing side of wars 
found the demands too great and sought to resolve their problems by expanding the amount of currency of circulation. With nothing to guarantee the value of the currency, the result would be to rapidly depreciate the value of the currency relative to other currencies or materials such as gold. The social impact of such government policies were traumatic, especially for those who lived on limited or fixed e incomes or those who had investments de denominated in the rapidly depreciating currency. To many, the willingness of the state to engage in such activity and a market reaction to such activities would lead to a search for alternative ideologies to restore order and stability in society. Basically, Germany had to repay so much money that the fascist party of Hitler came to power. That's the gist of what it, what I just read, I guess. Um, production. We're getting shit tons of fruit. Ooh, telephone. Oh, no more telephones. It's better. Fascist newspaper, um, the middle strata, I guess. We're making some money, so let's actually do some importing. Long live Italy. Lyon is a core. Oh, well. Um, Mundu electrified. Brilliant. Yemen yeah, still trying. Um, decrease the opinion of Germany in Austria-Hungary to being cordial oh we are still cordial with uh, gain one plurality nice um, anonymous investor business this style of business culture meant that the owners treated the business as an investment ownership was not about producing and selling things instead the only reason for being the owner Silly cat. Was to see the business ratios rise. This practice was professional but lacked commitment and was extensively risk aversive. Industrial power is increasing still. But yeah. Um there we go. Finished all army tech, I think. I believe. You're doing fine, you're doing fine, you're doing fine. Sure, I'll upgrade you and you. Yeah, Campania can have all factor. Actually, oh, I shouldn't have done the winery, but okay. Um, liquor distillery doing great. You two are doing fine. Um, yeah, not a lot of Istria that's going well, but... Okay. Oh, tank factory expanded, please. No, it's going to cost me some money again, but it's worth it. It's all worth it. Libyan Desert actually doing some stuff. Um, expand this one. Close down that one. This is a lot more micro-intensive, the planned economy, but that's the reason why it's planned, I guess. You're doing fine. You're not doing that great. Neither are you. Um, this one can also be expanded. Ammunition is always needed, I guess. Um, whoa, you are doing great. Great. Also, you are doing great. Some factories are just amazing in their income. Yeah. Some aren't, but okay. There's a lot of ammunition going out into the world. Screw it. Expanding this one. Hmm... Oh, hello. There's a... Oh, it's already expanding. That's good. This one is also needing... There we go. Yeah, it probably isn't helping that some nations are in other spheres and then ruining our chance of getting stuff. But yeah, now I'm going to finish up commerce, everything. Excellent. Tensions dissipate. And, yeah, there's the income again, now that we have spent everything on the factories. And we can expand fortresses as well everywhere. And we're using the control key to just expand them en masse. This costs us tons of money again, but... Oh well. 
Our nation deserves it. Kind of does, but also if we get attacked, it is scary not to have some pretty decent fortresses up in places. Um, oh, we never really expanded in Naples, did we? Sardinia, Prov oh, Corsica is part of the Provence. Yeah, that just spent us a lot of money. Belgium can be increased in influence. Okay, auto saving again. <gasps> Crap! Really? Increase opinion. That's. I should have paid attention to that. Um, discredit the Russian Empire. First and foremost. Um, discredit the United Kingdom. So they get a lot slower income in these places. Oh, and suddenly Germany decides to get in on the action again. You know what? We might lose Austria-Hungary out of her sphere. Hang, hang on. Since that happened, we're making more money again. Firepower versus mobility. After the end of the First World War, the major powers had to reevaluate their military strategies in light of the brutal lessons learned during the years of inconclusive trench warfare. One major school of thought that emerged focused on the importance of using massed firepower, principally in the form of artillery, to overwhelm the enemy and literally blast a hole in their lines to facilitate an advance. While another school of thought suggested that the key to victory in the modern battlefield was mobility so that friendly forces could maneuver around enemy strong points to pursue the attack on more advantageous terms. Other doctrine, human wave versus the spearhead. For those armies that focused on mobility, it was important to decide how precisely the army was to be mobile. One option was to use standard infantry forces and overwhelm the enemy when contact was made, while another option was to focus on specialized spearhead units, often with a mecha mechanized component that were best suited for mobility. Ooh. and could quickly exploit weaknesses in the enemy line. Army supply consumption down by 30%. Or well, it's a modifier of 30%. I don't actually think that changes a lot. Um, wow, so much organization. So if we look at build army, we see that supply on infantry is down to 525% now. And there are 20 attack as well. Jesus. That's just insanely large. Okay, um, did they just really do that to us there? Jeez, what? We really have to watch out for these guys now, don't we? They're just, um, relationship changed? No, 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 Casas Belly is fine. Anyway, I think this is going to be the end of this episode because uh, we're almost at that point again. I want to thank you all for watching, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date with all the Let's Plays and videos that I make. And our economy seems to be doing a lot better now in some states, at least Campania is doing reasonable except for the um, canned food factory here. Yeah, there are still some pretty bad factories going on. The telephones are just not doing it right now, are they? No, still no telephone production. Only 21 supply and bought. Jesus. Hmm. Oh well. Hmm. Anyway, I will see you guys later.